Okay, so I'm just going to make a, a quick video to kind of summarize the climate change PowerPoint. So there's a lot of slides here. It looks like there's about 55 of them, which sounds like a lot. Although a lot of the information on the slides is just kind of data points to kind of show how the climate is changing. And then, of course, we want to talk a little bit about why it might be changing and a little bit about the greenhouse effects and things like that. So if we kind of look at our slides here, um, the first thing we want to talk about just as a uh, kind of clarification is that climate and weather are different when we talk about those terms. So when we look at the weather, that's more of a short term kind of local expression. So we say, you know, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow or the weather was terrible, whereas climate usually refers to a trend or a long term kind of uh, observation of what's happening to our weather. So. Um, when people say a lot of times, you know, well, it was uh, they got a huge snowfall in Flagstaff the other day. So obviously, you know, we're not having global warming. You know, that's a weather event and, and really not a climate indicator. And so the other thing I should probably mention is you'll probably hear the term cl uh, climate change and global warming. Both of those can be used to describe what's kind of going on with our planet currently. It seems that climate change is the more common term now because of the fact that it's true that the planet is warming overall, but that is not true everywhere. And so climate can just be changing or different in some places. So, you know, as the climate changes, there could be locations that are cooler and not always warm. And so I think in order to kind of clarify that or avoid some confusion, it kind of transition from this term of global warming to climate change. So you might hear those interchangeably, but I think more and more you're going to hear the term climate change. And so what I want to talk about initially is just kind of what is uh, a factors that are affecting our climate. And certainly our atmosphere plays a dominant role in what's happening in our environment. And so our, our atmosphere is made up mostly of nitrogen, oxygen, but there are some trace gases that uh, what we're calling greenhouse gases that have properties that allow it to trap some of the heat from the sun and not let it escape back into the atmosphere. And of course, we need our climate change or our, I'm sorry, we need our um, greenhouse gases because without it, we would be frozen. It would be like zero degrees and there'd be ice everywhere. It wouldn't be a, a habitable planet. And so the um, atmospheric gases here, the, the greenhouse gases, they serve a purpose. We need those. And of course, it's been going on for a long period of time. So we have some permanent gases you can see in this little chart here. You know, the ones that are fairly constant, they're not really changing very much, at least over time periods that humans have been alive and things like that. But there are some variable gases which can change for a variety of reasons. And we'll talk a little bit about that, too. So certainly there are natural causes of changes in CO2 or methane and water vapor and things like that. But it appears that there's also some increase or changes that are being brought about by human activities that we want to kind of look at. And so we'll talk real quick about the few types of gases. CO2, of course, is the one you've probably heard of the most. It has a pretty big impact, even though it's not a huge amount, right? And we don't need this huge amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere for it to perform its you know, greenhouse effect, which is what we need. And we see a lot of the CO2 naturally coming from volcanic activity, right? When eruptions happen. We release CO2 into the atmosphere, plants and animals through respiration. When things die, CO2 is released. So there's lots of ways we can get CO2. And actually, when you look at the uh, article this week, it talks a little bit about the carbon cycle, which is how carbon gets kind of moved throughout our system. And so that kind of uh, goes into a little more detail about how carbon is kind of moved around in our planet. And of course, we can, you know, take CO2 out of the atmosphere and things like that through photosynthesis, uh, air and seawater mix, weathering of soils. These all have impacts on the amount of CO2 that's available. Now, there are some ways that we can have CO2 put in the atmosphere that are human caused. We call those anthropogenic. And so 
if we burn fossil fuels. So the idea is that naturally we would have this uh, erosion of material and release of CO2, but it's being accelerated basically. We are doing that by pulling carbon from the ground, which are fossil fuels, and then we're burning them, which is releasing the CO2 into the atmosphere. Almost, you might want to think about prematurely. If the natural process would occur, there'd be maybe some uplift and erosion. We'd expose some of these uh, rocks and some of these resources that then would slowly be released. But we're kind of increasing that. And so we know there's been some increase in CO2, and there seems to be a connection between CO2 and temperature. And so as we track that over the years, we see that they definitely are coinciding here, where there's a CO2 increase, there appears to be a temperature increase. And it's not as simple as that. Certainly there are many things that are dictating temperature increases as the CO2 increases. And so uh, we're using like ice cores and things like that to pull that data, the CO2. So as we pull the ice cores, we know the air gets trapped in there. And we can sample that and it can give us an indication of how much CO2 is available. Other gases that impact uh, the atmosphere and potentially the temperature, we have ozone which is, uh, you know, uh, UV protectant, right? So we, we like that because it uh, we get damaged by too much UV. We know there's been some issues with uh, chlorofluorocarbons, which are the kind of the hairspray and the aerosol kind of stuff, that uh, there was the hole in the ozone, and then we kind of worked our way through that, figured out that there was these CFCs that were causing the problem, and kind of uh, rectified that to some degree so that we know we can change some behaviors and have some impact on our atmosphere which is a good thing it's also methane and so a lot of this is a uh, natural gas and so it comes naturally from decaying uh, bacteria and things like that um, cows and sheep but of course there are other ways we can introduce more methane and by you know coal mining and oils and and leaks and things like that and just a little off topic, you know, there there are some concerns that, you know, in the uh, Arctic, where we have what's called permafrost, so here the soils are frozen a majority of the time, and so it's trapping a lot of decaying matter in there that doesn't have the ability to decay. And some of the concerns is that as the planet warms, then the permafrost would go away, and if it's a large area, it would release a lot of methane into the atmosphere. And although methane is shorter lived, it doesn't last as long in the atm atmosphere, it does have a larger greenhouse impact than CO2 does. And so there's some concerns about that. And what we'll see and you'll kind of discover is that there's a lot of feedback loops here. You know, one thing affects another thing that affects another thing. And not all those are well understood. So the models that are created are fairly basic but they still are an indicator that the planet is warming and that it seems that humans are accelerating that warming and of course there's a lot of other factors at play here but you know we have to look at the data and kind of evaluate that and determine you know what that might mean for us and there are other things that can impact the climate aerosols or just liquid or or solid particles that water can condense on. So air pollution, you know, just a lot of aerosols are released from that. There's some natural sources, of course, the dust and wildfires and things like that. But of course, fires and burning of fossil fuels, you know, release a lot of aerosols. And same thing, these things are kind of uh, complex in how they interact with our climate. But we know that water vapor is another greenhouse gas. And so it's, right, the the water that's in the atmosphere, we talk about humidity, how much water is contained in the atmosphere. And so we know that the more water vapor in our atmosphere, the greater the greenhouse effect. And so same thing, talking about that feedback loop, we get this idea that as the planet warms, more moisture can be held in the atmosphere and we increase the amount of water vapor. And so now we increase the amount of, you know, uh, greenhouse gases so then the planet warms and then there's more water and it goes on and on right so these feedback loops can be complex but uh, problematic for sure and so what we see is 
the evidence is suggesting that certainly the climate is warming. We know that it has warmed in the past. We know that the earth goes through natural cycles where it's cooler and warmer. We know that that occurs. What we're seeing with the recent data is that there's a very rapid change, faster than other changes we've seen in the past by you know collecting data, and that it's higher than in the past. And so as we looked for reasons why, it started to come out that it looked like that humans were kind of releasing more of these materials into the atmosphere and was potentially having an impact on the climate. And so when we talk about the greenhouse effect, right, I, I talked about it or mentioned it before, I didn't really go into it too much, but the idea is that, right, we have sun, you know, heat that's coming to our planet from the sun. And so the amount of heat is one factor for our climate, certainly. How much is reflected back from our planet into space and how much we retain. And so we can look at all those values and determine, you know, how much sun, you know, heat are we getting from the sun? Is that variable? Maybe that's why our planet is warming. How much is being trapped? Is that or how much is being reflected? So we can look at those things to determine, you know, or have these things changed and, and what's causing a change and potentially figure out if we can have some impact on that. So I talked about that the planet can change naturally. We know that there are some mechanisms that can alter the amount of heat that the sun is, or, sorry, that the earth is receiving. And so one of these things called the Milankovitch cycles is really a, an observation that was noticed, uh, you know, back in the day when they were taking observations about how our planet behaved. And they noticed that the orbit of our planet is changing over time. The tilt of our planet is actually changing over time. And the wobble of our axis is changing over time. And you can see the years here. And so what happens is about every 100,000 years, we kind of get an overlap. You know, this is in the 80,000 year range. This is if, you know, every fourth year, so four times this, about the 100,000, these kind of amplify each other. And this was one of the explanations for why we might have had uh, glacial events in the past where it got colder. Because the farther away we get here, right, the less heat we get and it can get colder. And then we get closer, it can get a little warmer. And if these all double up with the farther away part, then it can get colder and even colder. And that could allow an ice age to occur. So we know about these effects and we can calculate them in our models and see if these are what are driving these changes in climate. We also know that the oceans play a huge role in our climate. And so there's actually what's called a conveyor belt, the way that the water, the ocean water moves. And so there are these kind of pathways that are taken and mostly because of temperature differences in the ocean. So we know colder water will sink. And so up here near the poles where the water is super cold and we have some melting you know, ice caps, the cold water actually sinks down and it stays low for a long period of time until it finally rises up as it spends a lot of time here in, in the ocean water and then the sun heats it starts to rise and where we have this upwelling and flow of warmer water it brings warmer temperatures and so over here in england it's a lot warmer than it would be at that altitude right so not um i guess that's uh not not the height but where it's located right so you know if you kind of go across here you're like oh it's canada it's pretty cold there but it's a lot warmer because of these ocean currents that we see and so once again, one of these feedback loops problem is that we the, the concern is that as we heat the planet, a lot of that heat is being absorbed by the oceans. And so the ocean temperatures are increasing and that potentially could change either the path of this conveyor belt or maybe it shuts down or alters. And so then the upwellings are in different places. And so temperature is kind of dependent on where these things are moving and flowing. And that could change the climate around certain locations. And so this impact of how the oceans are behaving, if we're melting more ice, then the oceans are, you know, having these more uh, input of fresh water. 
same thing lots of complexities here but there are connections with everything we do so but we do know that this conveyor belt is another way that the climate can be altered if that thing changes over time and so we do also know that when that happens you know we talked about less heat or more heat coming and there's some evidence for that so we can look back and see that there has been warmer periods and cooler periods and these periods we can associate with some type of change in the amount of heat energy coming from the sun and so we know that that happens but when we put that in our models or look at that or add that it does it's not enough it's not enough to suggest that that's what's causing the climate to change today and so just a little more information about those two warming events we also know that volcanic activity can cause the climate to change so we know that eruptions that put a lot of material into the atmosphere can either uh, block out some heat that comes to our planet so it has a cooling effect potentially but then as that ash clears you know a lot of times there's some different components from the volcanic eruptions that can stay in the atmosphere that can also act as you know a greenhouse and then it could heat it so we know there's an impact by that so and there's some evidence in the not too distant future mount uh, pinatubo erupted in 1991 there's a little thing with uh cooling and things like that that we can see in the record but when we uh when we when we look at you know these changes what what the models kind of predict is that it's not enough so when we factor all those in we don't see that effect just being a natural cause and so some of the evidence for that some of the data and so the bunch of slides that you're going to see here basically just um, information and, and data that's been collected that kind of shows you know how we kind of arrived at some of this information and then just some of the things that we observe some indicators that the planet is warming and so we talked a little bit about how co2 and temperature seem to be related we also could look at you know sunspot numbers are an indication of some type of solar uh, energy or heat that's being released and we could see that it's kind of decreasing here there's no sharp increase so it, it's suggesting that this isn't the cause of the warming here um, we know that we have these uh, large increases in co2 which we can measure and so we're up to this kind of 400 parts per million if we look at our computer models and we talk about you know we input all this information and say you know for all these things that we know and the, the natural kind of impacts on climate what do we see kind of we see this blue line here if we suggest that maybe it's not natural it's natural and some input from humankind we kind of see this green line here and that much more closely matches the observations that we're seeing and so it's another indicator that potentially humans are influencing our climate and so we can see the types of greenhouse gases that are increasing and so a lot of these are associated with the industrial revolution the burning of fossil fuels and we see a fairly sharp increase in these uh, greenhouse gases which potentially can cause the planet to warm where do they come from you know or what kind of breakdown are there well a lot of carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and some fluorinated gases here <clears throat> we also see that you know where are they being produced from so electricity transportation industry commercial agriculture is kind of where we're getting these uh components from fossil fuel burning and so there's evidence from a lot of uh, intergovernmental panels and United Nations things that suggest that the climate is changing. So we'll go with the climate change story that there is evidence to suggest that humans are causing some change to that and that there will be a change in the overall mean temperature of the planet and there will be impacts to that and so when we look at you know all of the different kind of studies that have been done there's definitely a consensus we would argue in science where a majority of 
people who do this, who are climate Scientology people, or I don't know where that came from, are climate scientists, um, they agree that there is a change in our climate. It appears to be warming overall and that there's an impact from human beings that are causing some of that warming. Now, that doesn't mean you can get people who disagree with that or that there's some flaws in some of the information that are presented. But overall, we'd argue that there is evidence strongly suggesting that humans are having some impact on the climate. And so if we go through some of these kind of factors, we see that global temperatures and CO2 are going up. We see, and you can run through these slides. I don't want to, you know, blither on forever. It's already up to, what, 20 minutes of me talking, which I know is fun and exciting, but, you know, you don't need any more of that than you have to get. So, you know, you can just kind of blaze through these. There's are just little uh, indicators of how things are changing and evidence to indicate that there's a change in our climate. And mostly that's related to a warming climate. And so hottest, you know, on record is the recent kind of data that we see different cities that have had their uh, record heat. Um, the climate overall, the whole planet itself, we know is changing. Um, we see changes from uh, El Nino and La Nina, which typically have some indication of you know, it's cooler or warmer, but they're all potentially uh, increasing over time. We see consistency and results where different, you know, groups, different methods are used, and they're all kind of indicating the same change that there is an increase in global temperatures. We see a lot of heat being stored in the oceans, and we talked a little bit about that, why that's problematic. And so, one of the things is the ocean conveyor belt. But the other thing, of course, is the oceans can hold a lot of CO2. And so they become a little more acidic. And so that's a problem. You might have heard things about, you know, bleaching coral reefs and things like that is potentially related to a lot of CO2 being absorbed by the oceans and having them change their pH to be a little more acidic. We also know that by melting a lot of the glaciers and ice caps and things like that, there's talk, of course, of sea level rise, and that's one of the big problems associated with climate change. The reason that the oceans do rise is not just the addition of more water from, let's say, glaciers melting and filling up the ocean basins, but as the ocean basins heat up, water actually expands, and that's a lot of water on our planet. And so as the oceans expand, they also fill up more areas, so they rise also. And so it, it's kind of a, there's a, definitely multiple issues associated with our oceans warming and more co2 in our oceans and so of course we come back to the sea level rise now sea level rise is extremely variable and so the predictions are all over the place it can be from you know uh you know a couple inches to a couple feet and it's hard to know how much that will be because there's so many variables, but certainly it is rising. There's evidence that it's rising currently. And so for low-lying areas and coastal communities, this is definitely a problem. Uh, more sea level indications, more flooding indications. Um, we have uh, the idea that the ice caps, in this case, you know, we have ice sheets that are getting smaller and smaller. Of course, that's related to the oceans rising and things like that. You can watch that crazy little animation. Um, Great Lakes, uh, there's less ice there. And of course, uh, it, it's weird. In some cases, we get a reduction there, but it causes more uh, lake effect snow. So kind of a weird thing where less ice there is actually causing more snowfall. And we know there's glaciers that have gotten smaller. Certainly there's imagery of that. Uh, record temperatures, record fires, all that kind of good stuff. All right, so let's summarize real fast. So there's a ton of effects from all this uh, indication that the planet is overall warming. And that is that, you know, there's more droughts, more fires, uh, more precipitation because the atmosphere can hold more water. So we have heavier rainfalls, we have flooding. We have just the changing of the climates. And then, we, of course, we have sea level rise where places that are low or coastal can be, uh, you know, inundated by water as it moves forward. And so that could be a problem.
And so here's kind of a list of some of the issues that we talk about for uh, climate change and some of the problems with sea level rise, right? So inches to feet, depending on where you are, depending on how much the temperature increases, depending on how all these feedback loops interact with each other. And so certainly there's some issues there. Uh, we talk about the uh, the cryosphere, right? The part of the, the water that's frozen, the permafrost is melting. That's a problem, which could lead to some more methane being released into the atmosphere, of course, and then that could drive more warming. And we have this water going into the oceans, causing sea level to rise and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, what else we have? So more melting of the ice sheets and glaciers. You can look at this little link here that shows a little bit of the change over time. And then we have, uh, you know, how this affects the ecosystems in the biosphere. So certainly as we change climates and change ecosystems, we have this moving of uh, creatures. Either their environment is too warm or too cold, so they migrate or they change or they move to a different area. And so we have issues with that. So you can kind of read through this list of changes here. And so overall, the argument is that can we have some impact on our environment? Well, the evidence is suggesting that we can and we are. And can we then reverse some of the impact that we're having? Potentially, but it's not a quick fix for sure. So the suggestion is that if we can control some of the fossil fuel burning, some of the release of some of these greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, that over time we can mitigate some of these changes that we're seeing and the predictions of these huge impacts like large increases in sea level and other factors won't be as impactful. And so the challenge here, of course, is to get everybody on board, which is certainly difficult. And you know, I think another one of the arguments for the climate change is basically that it's happening quickly. So we could argue that, yeah, look, the climate has changed in the past and things have adapted and still lived. And that's true. But the argument is that because of the huge amount of greenhouse gases that are being introduced, the climate is changing way faster than things can adapt. And so we run into these problems of, losing certain species because they can't adapt this quickly. Certainly they could adapt slowly over time, but as things change year to year quickly, then they can't survive and they die out and there's a reduction in species. And same thing with humans. We'll adapt. This isn't going to kill us for sure, but the idea is that the impact on uh, different society, places in society will, will certainly be variable, but, you know, if sea level starts rising, then you, you have to spend all your money figuring out how to keep your city from flooding. Or if there's more hurricanes or more floods, then you spend all your money, you know, developing these things and you don't have the money to support, you know, other things that your city needs. Or there's people immigrating to your country because their country is, you know, being inundated by issues. So it's certainly a complex issue. And it appears that you know, we're attempting to take steps in the right direction. Certainly we are looking for more cleaner ways to acquire energy, but um, the, the changing climate is certainly complex, but I think that there's some good scientific evidence that suggests that there is some component of the changing climate that is being impacted by humans and that we potentially have the ability to change that if we can change uh, how we I guess mostly is how we we consume energy and so I think I've finally made it okay we made, we made it through the the uh, presentation so I know it was a lot and it, it's a super complicated we could spend probably weeks talking about um, all the different science associated with that and if you have some you know, if you're interested in learning a little more, you can uh, go ahead and uh, click some of the links that were in the PowerPoint here. And certainly there's a lot of information available online that you can kind of go through. So, all right, hopefully that wasn't too crazy and uh, you understood a little bit of what's going on.